Uh, okay, we'd like to call the meeting of the Commission for the Arts to order at uh, 5.01 p.m. And uh, I think we will do the roll call now. Let the record show all commissioners are present except for Lees and Kadakia. Okay, thank you. Um, so moving on, we will, uh, for those who would like to stand and uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance, do that now. All right, thank you everybody. Um, special presentations and proclamations. Looks as though we do not have any tonight, so we will move on to uh, number five, um, oral communications. Um, we will uh, ask uh, speakers, we have one speaker, I'm told, so come on up, thank you. And we have Rosemary Kimball, and remember you have three minutes to address the commission. Mm -hmm. um, I am Rosemary Kimball, a uh, contemporary Zen painter of Dancing Brush Studios in Cardiff by the Sea. I taught brush painting in the Asian manner to every sixth grader at Pacific View for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I was born in Cardiff by the Sea and, and I'm very active in the arts community. Um, I'm standing before this August body of arts commissioners who are so qualified to lead the formation of our city's arts center. We have a theater critic, a writer of well-read children's books, several gallery represented painters, a music educator, and that's only half of, um, of, the, uh, of the commissioners. My issue tonight is having the commissioners seriously consider building excitement in the city with the residents and the tourists by installing a legal sign on the Pacific View property indicating the future home of the Pacific View Art Center. I believe the neighbors all know by now um, about the changes happening in Pacific View, or at Pacific View, and I think this sign will build interest and excitement and a desire to become involved as we move forward to f toward finishing the construction and starting activity. Um, what would it take to have the city put a permanent sign on the fence that would be taken down only when the project is completed and the art center is ready to open? I am happy to help with making it happen in whatever way is needed. It's, I know getting things done has to get on a to-do list and there's Things sometimes block, block it away, and let's uh, remove the blocks, and I'll help. Thank you very much. Quick question, and and I love the fact that you have such history there. That's fantastic. Um, so you're talking about a, a temporary sign that would alert people to the fact that this project is in the works, essentially. Yeah. Okay. That's. Right, got it, okay. Because I was going to make a sign, but I heard that it would only stay up two weeks. Oh, there are, there are, yeah, there are rules out there, but thank you very much. Okay. All right, any, any other questions or um, we good on that? Okay, great, um, thank you again. Uh, no other speakers, uh, as far as I know, so we will Move on to um, 
Any changes to the agenda? Any? No, there are there aren't any there. changes to the agenda? Um, okay, and then um, so we move on to number seven, approval of the minutes. And um, I'm told we can uh, make a motion to uh, approve both of these in one fell swoop if no one has any objection to that. Um, so I will make the motion to approve the minutes for both April 3rd and April 12th. Um, the, uh, I guess there's a little bit, some of us were not at April 12th, so we have to abstain. Can we do that? We can't, yeah. If you watched or listened to the meeting, then you can vote. If not, you would need to abstain. Okay, but if we're doing them together, we can't abstain and approve at the same time. That's the Correct. That's my question. So if you want to vote for each meeting separately, we can do that too. Yeah, I guess it hadn't occurred to me, but I think we'll, yeah. So. Let me say this again. Let's uh, do a motion to approve the minutes for uh, the April 3rd regular meeting first. Um, I'll make a motion for approval. Do we have a, have a second? Great, thank you. So we have a motion and a second. We can go ahead and vote on that. All right, uh, looks as though, do we have all the votes in? So, Commissioner Lees, um, since you are now here, what is your vote? I can update that here. Mm. Are you in favor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great, the uh, motion passed uh, unanimously. Uh, now the second uh, topic, um, or the second motion for approval of the meetings of the special meeting of uh, April 12th. Um, I'll make a motion to approve, to approve those minutes. Do we have a second? second? Okay, great, thank you. Take a vote on that. Marked absent too. My mm. my vote is yay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, this was for the special meeting. For the special meeting. Oh. See a tally. <laughs> okay. Are we still working on that? No. Oh, okay. Sorry, that was my mistake. I'd, okay, that will that pass unanimously? So thank you. Um, all right. So we'll move on to action items. And um, the first one is um, 8A, the uh, El Portal undercrossing. Mosaic, which we're excited to hear about. Um, so I uh, understand we have a presentation. There is a presentation, and I just wanted to share a little bit of information with the commissioners, part reminder, refresher. This project was done through the request for qualifications process instead of a request for proposal. And how that differed, for instance, from the Encinitas Boulevard undercrossing is that artist team supplied a rendering at the time of what they wanted to create. And that is what was reviewed. 
in this instance being a request for qualifications, the search was for an artist team who was qualified to work with children, work with the creation of the art, interpreting kids' concepts. So this one you're gonna be evaluating differently based on the scope of work that includes working with the children at Pauliki Central, having them interpret those themes related to the history of Encinitas, and relay them in the renderings that they're showing you today. So as you evaluate and as you, <coughs> excuse me, think about whether, uh, how you'd like to make your recommendation, remember it's that scope of work that is your, your benchmark, that's what you're looking at, and whether the artist team met that standard. So I will now share this presentation. And in addition to the presentation that they can go through, after they go through that, you'll be invited to come walk through and, and be able to see it. Great. Thank you. Hi there, good evening. My name is Jay Bell. I'm the founder of Campana Studios. This is Jerm Wright, who's the lead artist and um, the, really the person pulling this whole project together. Uh, as um, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. It's been great to be working with the city through the arts um, department, and uh, we're happy today to share with you our progress. Um, so you can take a look at where we're at uh, uh, as we move forward on the contract. Uh, Campana Studios is a grassroots nonprofit visual arts organization that I founded uh, in 2020, and our mission is to create platforms for artists to engage in the community. Um, we do this in a number of different ways. We do it everything from hosting workshops to facilitating art shows, and we also do it through public art projects where we directly contract with cities or private entities to do community-driven public art projects. Uh, we responded back in the fall to requests for qualifications from the city, um, prepared our qualifications package, and presented on what would be, um, uh, you know, the scope of work was to work with uh, Paul Ecke Central students, fifth and sixth grades, to come up with a design for the um, uh, panels, uh, the mosaic panels at the El Portal Undercrossing, which I know we're all very familiar with because it's such an exciting project. Um, through that process, we proposed uh, Jeremy Wright, who's going to walk us through the design, who's worked on numerous mosaic tile uh, projects here in town and also in other places, uh, to lead the students through this, this design process. What we're presenting here to you today and what we're going to work walk you through the process of how we got to it was how we worked with the students um, to get to this design uh, that incorporates the um, their understanding of the uh, history of Encinitas um, both individually but then also what they learn in school and also what the famous Mr. Wright was able to impart to them uh, as a uh, multi-generational uh, resident of Encinitas. Um, so we're excited what we have here. Once again, just, you know, these are pencil renderings of what will be a mosaic tile project. So, you know, you've got a great analogy that you say, right? It's like um, playing a symphony on the, on the I, piano I, or we're, something. We're giving you guys an acoustic guitar right now, and, but we're going to be presenting a piano concert. Right. So, but the intent here is to share with you the design yeah. that the students came up with. And now Jerm is going to walk you through the process of how we got to this today. Sure. And then once we get through this, we'd actually we were hoping that you'd be able to walk through it so you can walk you through exactly how these will flow with the panels uh, as you go from school side on to PCH. So before we get into the details, any questions on the process or any questions for us organizationally? All right, well, let's jump right into okay. it. Okay, yeah, just real quick background. I've been, I'm a credentialed school teacher for over 25 years in the San Diego District, San Diego for over 20. Um, was a big uh, part of the Santa Fe Bridge, Bridge Project, so I'm so glad I got to be a part of that. That really was instrumental in working with this as far as materials and process and all that. So one of the beginning things I did at PEC is I held an assembly, and it was so much fun. I had K through three, one assembly, and four through six, and I presented the project. I gave every um, classroom a box where kids can they had a broken cup, they could put it in there if they found beach rock. So I wanted them to get involved and to get tie-in. Um, from there, I worked with the current art teacher, uh, Dana Jenkins, and she pulled together a design team of about 
six to eight students, and I met with them, oh, probably on six different occasions, uh, walking the bridge, doing drawings, and narrowing it down. And actually, underneath these renderings, you'll see some of their drawings and their writings. And um, but that was it was really enjoyable. Uh, I also worked with San Diego Academy students and coming up with the renderings as well as that. So um, I think honestly, let me walk through what the let yeah. me walk through a little bit of what kind of so everybody can get themselves set in time and space, right? Yeah. So we, I believe everybody's been down to the undercrossing, right? So so we can orient ourselves as you go through this. Here. Jay, yes. could you step up to the microphone? Um, why don't you orient everyone as we're walking through this project? So the total number of panels? S 16. 16 total panels and then a ribbon as well as the carns on both yeah. sides. So if you go back to, you want to go back to that one right there? Mm -hmm. So this is the side uh, PEC is just uh, to the left of that. And so this is one of the main entrances. So when you come to walk down, we set this up so you can almost feel like you're walking down through the bridge. And just about everything there is about touching level. So one of the things in the fabrication of this is that we want it to be tactile. And so especially working with there's not cars, it's not like you're just driving by. So it'll be a very intimate, it'll be a very intimate piece and we um, understand that as well. Yeah, that's on the west side. So when you guys come down here, you can Consider that one of the parts of the the element of the designs because the the panels almost feel like comic strips You know and, and I think that came from Caltrans Caltrans um, But we wanted to have an element that pulls them all together. So when you come see here There's it almost feels like bookends on some of them And so there'll be a, a design that goes throughout all the panels that also pulls in uh, the cairns and the decorative ribbon too so, and then there's very subtle uh, iconic images that, again, the PEC kids came up with, and those are in the back row. Uh, we've got seagulls, bicycles, wave, poinsettia, and then the Panikin building, too. Well, I think we can come down for this now. Yeah. So does that make sense? Do you yeah. want to come down? We'll do it. Sure. Do you want to put it on the, um, the bridge? Yeah. So we can kind of yeah. get I did. Yeah. I had a quick question while, yeah. while we're doing that, because I, I love the uh, spirit of inclusion with the thumbprint tiles, oh, uh, yeah. where everybody's involved. But uh, where do those, uh, where are those incorporated? Okay, so in, when you come down to see the rendering, so there'll be a little bit of transition from the border design, which is those large tiles, to the actual history of Encinitas piece. And so in between that, there'll be just a ribbon of all the kids' thumbprints. And I'm gonna get every single student at PEC to do a thumbprint. And so I've done some little prototypes. We fired them, we put a little glass in them. They're very tactile. And I have some over there, by all means, pick them up, touch them. And all the clay is um, fired to a very high degree, so it's very sturdy. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. So we'll if you wanna- you through. All right. I'm going to go to that one. Yes. Yeah, so so this, this first one right here, you'll be walking like this. And so you want me to explain it to everyone through the microphone as we go through? <laughs> the commission is now coming down and walking through. Like right here? Okay. Yeah, so when you're, so you'll see that, that one on the left is actually this one. So imagine we're it right here. From So we're coming from the school. Oh, we're coming from the school. We're coming from the school. Okay, I just came from PEC and we walked. Through. And we're coming down the ramp right now. The surfer here is a reference. Uh, Linda Benson, who was the first woman um, female surf championship. We grew up around here and went to St. Peter. What's that? That is where the Alaya, what's the name of the hotel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so Alaya that there used to be, uh, it was like a, it had um, animals all over there just back in the 60s and the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. So, so some of this, I, I can't remember as a kid. And there's very subtle things like, I mean, here's the actual beacon. There used to be a road that you could drive down 
My dad was telling me that he surfed there um, for wetsuits. I said, Dad, you're freezing. He's like, oh, we have big fire on the beach. So anyway. But this one is, um, and over here, you, you know, we're going, this one will go way back. Dinosaurs, sea creatures. And then this dinosaur, actually, uh, I had a high school student research that with all the tectonic plates and all that, and she figured out which which dinosaur roamed this area at one time, which is so cool. Um, this Jeremy, one, what is the seal? Where's the story behind the seal? That's the um, PEC mascot, oh, okay. Pollock Central. Yeah, it was funny because when we were doing all of this, we actually forgot to put the school in. And we forgot to put the school in. So. That's one thing I loved about it is the narrative like a lot of in stories yeah. that if you haven't lived here for a while, you probably don't know yeah. why there would be a little And so same with this one. Uh, there's uh, Mr. Eaton, and he had uh, a very large swath of property in the uh, <laughs> town in the city still in of the Eatonville. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and that was great. kind of on the north well, And then, the and then the 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 I moved to Poleki. Yeah, the bee guy. He, he was the character. Oh, yeah. So how long were you at Palenque? My, uh, my no, daughter was at school. And then this one, this one is for specifically, it's specifically coming from a different generation room, uh, the painting. And then, I don't know, it's very subtle, but the truck has a pipe and it has hobby supplies. Because when you meet them, it wasn't a coffee shop. It was a hobby shop. I didn't go there every day. Yeah, so now what you're doing is you just went under the railroad tracks, uh -huh. and now you guys are walking. By all means, pick stuff up and take a look at it. Here's the, the one. This is the, uh, oh, you got one, yeah. Um, as, much as, as much as I would love to just keep up with one or two students, but we can't. <laughs> hey, where's my? <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you go, if you go, it makes sense going this way. So we have the Kumi Eye, uh -huh. and which the kids are actually more knowledgeable than I am. So this is up, up this is on the big. hill, so coming now, down the hill to go. Now we're actually, I just got off the PDA. Right. So, 
Is the mic hot there? We are back in the microphone. Um, two elements that we talked about a little bit that um, are also, you know, tie into the narrative, but also um, bookend it as well as given some consistency are these um, uh, elements that the students yes. developed, right? Yes. You've got four iconic ones, five, five iconic yeah. ones that will be both on the Carnes, and then there's a pretty extensive ribbon that goes along a little stem wall uh, bench at different places too. So those will also be the bookends on the panels, um, kind of allow uh, some real flow as we go through the other narrative elements. And if there are any questions or comments or thoughts or anything you'd want to share with us this time? I do. I have a number of comments I'd like to make. Um, one, uh, the installation that we're going to be bidding that out, mm -hmm. and I know that's not something you do, that's something the city does, but I think that we should look very seriously at Yarek Gilat, the fellow who did Santa Fe, because he, during the installation of that, he raised a number of issues that hadn't been addressed, and he came up with solutions for them. So he has already proven himself to be a very reliable and uh, trustworthy installer. And, and so we I will, know it's the way the city does Right, well, it'll but, go out for bid. <laughs> I just like to make sure that um, you take a serious look at giving him the job. And um, I, was, I had a couple of questions about <clears throat> where the ribbon was. Um, and I want to say that uh, I agree with your decision to have detail because you are very close to the images and they're not very big but that's a perfect situation for having for looking at a detailed piece of art yeah. and also I think the uh, the sample you gave of the cairn where you had the drawing and then the finished completed piece which was much more intricate and dense and three-dimensional and I think in this case where we'd be better to go lighter with more light, bright colors, not so dense, because the, the surrounding texture is so heavy. I think that it's going, it would show off better if it was lighter. Just lighter weight, not thick and gooey, but you know, more like milk instead of, instead of thick and gooey. <laughs> that makes, I know it makes sense to Jeremy. And um, I love that you use the North Coastal Corridor elements, uh, and it's, this is like the one that the underpass that's near downtown shows a lot of swami stuff and the sea glass and everything. But this is not downtown. This is North Coast Corridor, Lucadia, and Sunitas. And I, I love the fact that the way you've picked up our little quirky little history and have kind of like in stories and stuff there. And, but a few things I would like to see that I don't see included. And one is the old tree canopy that used to be there. Oh, and the along the park. along 101. We do have it. Oh, good. Okay. And then we have the old drinking fountain. Okay. <laughs> remember that? No, that I don't remember. <laughs> but I do remember as a child driving to San Diego and going through the tree camp. Oh, gotcha. And, yeah, it, yeah. and it was incredibly yeah. charming. And now, as a member of Lucadia Town Council, I that's our our goal in doing the third phase of streetscape is to have that canopy restored. Mm -hmm. Possibly not completely in my lifetime, but you know, it's trees, so you have to plan ahead. And uh, the post office isn't noted, mm. which is kind of classic for us. Mm -hmm. And the eucalyptus trees, even though we're losing them, they are part of our history. Mm. And um, there aren't any under the sand kind of creatures in the drawing that you have of the fish. Yeah. It was a kid's design, so the yeah, kids right. are coming up with it. And, <laughs> they don't and, you know, know they're there. Yeah. But that's why I thought if they were there, the kids would go, oh, right, there are animals uh. under the sand, too. And um, I love the end stories and uh, pelicans. Mm -hmm. to, I don't remember, ever, except in Mexico, seeing pelicans the way you see them here, standing on the coast, see the pelicans flying yeah. around. I have a few questions. I've been thinking about this, you guys, so sorry mm -hmm. to take up so much time. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I wondered about the seal and Noah's Ark and the surfers are great. Um, the night and day, I thought that was a really spectacular piece. And uh, the, that's where the, the sky piece, number five, the palms and seagulls with no pelicans. And 
So we wonder, have you answered that? So the, the pieces that you're saying, the students designed of the wave, that's what's going on the cairns? The, the students designed the whole piece, that's the... Right, but the, the, those, the, the ones that are laying on the floor of there, that's what's mm -hmm. going on the cairns? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I, I remember that there was a theme that came down somehow from Sandag or something. Like the, the one in Encinitas has the beach glass, and ours, we had a theme, but I, I don't remember what it was. Ours is the, it's the history of Encinitas as interpreted by the fifth and sixth graders at Pollock okay. Central School. Okay. Yeah. And I was wondering how are you gonna use the thumbprint tiles? Mm -hmm. And there was um, point G, exhibit C, no art on accent wall. What, is, what does that mean? No. I couldn't find exhibit C. At one time, I can share some oh, information about plans, that. Yeah. In the original uh, design done by Sandag, there was going to be tile on that section. And because of some changes, I think it was because of safety lighting, they had to remove a segment of mosaic tile. So the we didn't get new drawings issued. It, we just knew that it wasn't there. So that's why it's crossed out and noted that that section no longer had mosaic tile. Is that the purple? Is that what's marked in purple? I'm not sure if that's what's marked in purple. I just, the reference to no tile on that particular wall was because it had been removed by Sandag. Okay, and because it's under, it's actually underneath part and there isn't any tile there, so that's probably what it is. Right, at one time there had been in the original drawings and so we had to just clarify that it specifically was no longer there. Because on the diagram where it says location, mm -hmm. it's, there are four places noted and they're all marked in purple. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't call them exhibit C. That's why I was confused. It didn't, oh, I, I apologize. It, it didn't, I'm sure what? that's it. It, it's, it refers to the, what's removed as exhibit C, but I, didn't, I couldn't find exhibit C. Got it. But Sorry about now that. You're it's, me that's what it is. Okay. It's, it's, it must have been in one of the layers of drawings. But basically, at one point, there was a section of tile mm -hmm. and on one of the walls. And when they realized they needed to have some safety lighting, the place to put it was Would where under, exactly. Yeah, right. So safety first. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. Those were uh, things thank I'd you. like to add and, and uh, thoughts I had. Well, Thanks just in a quick point of, point of order is that as much of us who have lived in Encinitas, and I know Kathleen, you've lived here longer than I have, have our remembrances of history and whatnot, really the scope of work for this is the children's interpretation of the history. So we, none of us are in a position to make requests because we are not students at Paul Ecke Central. So we are, the piece, it, the piece itself is input from the kids and their interpretation of history. Maybe I have a question. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, and con so considering the vast history and, and then uh, some people have lived here longer than others, you know, and they remember some of the things. Is there gonna be um, some kind of um, reference? Uh, well, you said there's no words, but um, I guess to somebody who might not know the history, you know, they walk by, oh, that's interesting, but they don't know, like, like the backstory. So how would that sure. perpe yeah. perpetuate? It's, isn't that exciting, though? Because, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I view that as a very exciting element of this project, meaning that we will all be that conduit, right? Yeah. Every kid at the school can then be that conduit. So meaning that you're, it might not just happen on its own, but it'll happen in conversation. It'll happen by people talking about it. It'll happen through that. There's no specific written element or key that will be at the project. Maybe that's something the city can include on their website. I've seen you do that with other elements, mm -hmm. where the city has a key um, on the website that can show that. What I think is so exciting is that as the project, as the uh, piece is installed and becomes a part of the community, it will then become literally a history book that we can then all share and talk about and go back and forth with it. Maybe, and and yeah. we can make sure that those anecdotes are included. So if someone really was, you know, couldn't get that answer and was so interested to know, we can have some of that history. Yeah, maybe um, well, the 
the heritage museums or you know the museums could have some kind of um, documentation because they have to keep a, keep the history alive um, so people know. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I think it's beautiful actually work. Actually, there is something going on that I can tell you about. It's part of a report from the T Cultural Tourism <coughs> Committee meeting mm -hmm. that the, the chamber, of the city is working with the Chamber of Commerce and the Historical Society, and the, tra there's, the city is uh, putting together trail maps, and they're all going to be able to be followed by, on your cell phone. And when you go certain places, you'll be able to click the QR code on a sign that will tell you about where you are. So they're putting together, walking up and down Pacific Coast Highway, identifying historic buildings. Now, that's what they're doing right now. And there could be a whole QR code just for going under this bridge that would tell the various stories. So that's exactly, the city's already planning on incorporating all the history. That's why you can put these cute little stories that are history that for somebody who's just visiting could see what a really personal and intimate expression this piece of art is, which I think is the point of it. Um, I just want to thank you and say, you know, as far as our, thank you for presenting it and seeing it at the stage and um, such a considerable amount of work in, you said you started in December, so that's really awesome. Um, and clearly, I think I see beyond qualification as far as working with kids and with thought to materials and then also translating those materials into the permanent piece. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. Oh, thank you. I, I just had a good question. Is there gonna be like a, 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 a you know, at the entry or the exit, something written up at all um, in words? I don't know if there'll be a plaque or something, but I mean, I know yeah. we can't have any words as a part of our. Right, if, yeah. not as know. part of the artwork, but something just at the entrance or? It, it, there will be a plaque for it, yes. There will be a plaque, okay. And the, just so you know, there's no, not allowed to be any words because that's one of the rules of transportation art. So it's written into SANDAG and um, the NCTD artwork mm -hmm. rules. I see. Wonderful, thank you. I just had one quick question. Um, have you have you drawn any lessons from past outdoor mosaic projects like this in terms of have there been any issues with durability or um, damage or anything like that? The, the ones I've seen seem pretty um, like they held hold up really well. But I just wondered if there's anything that special you have to do to sort of try to ensure the longevity of it or um, yeah, I'll is, I'll have to say after doing this for. Gosh, over 25 years doing mosaic. I've just gotten better and better and better. Um, and even my very first mosaic, um, the, one of the things I love about it is that holds the color so well. And you're dealing with cement, with the grout. Um, I use now a grout that has sealer already mixed in it. Uh, I, I use a cement that you could stick it on there and rock climb on it. It's a very strong cement, same stuff that we used on the Santa Fe Bridge. Um, not not rec recommending people do that, but no, you could if you. <laughs> but but all the elements I, I do, I, I definitely think about the weather. Yeah. You know, so I mean, we're hoping to put in beach rocks in there and anything that that can withstand the weather. No no wood or plastic or anything right. like that. Yeah. So, but well, ceramics is very sturdy. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That's great Ooh. to know. All right. Uh, I have one question. Yeah. It's really an exciting project. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering how long this, what's your time frame for how long it's going to take to um, well, manufacture this? Originally, we, if with the delays and the meetings and all that kind of stuff, I was hoping to start fabrication of March and have it done by December. So I'm just kind of shifting that in accordance to when we find, get our final approval from uh, the city. So our plan right now is so we're here with you. Hopefully we'll get approval. Then we go on June 14th, if everything goes right, we would go to city council. Everything goes right at city council, then we would be released for fabrication. Um, it's a little bit of a shift off the initial contract, so we'll have to sit down with the arts department and kind of look at what the timelines were and, and what makes sense. Um, one thing in terms of lessons learned, you know, on the functional side, um, 
you know, the kids have their own schedule at school, you know, so it's different than the city schedule. Mm -hmm. So right when we started this project uh, and went through the process with the city and got everything done, you know, then the kids were had their break, which they have. Mm -hmm. So we've had a couple of things come up schedule-wise on just coordinating two public agencies and their schedule, but now what we'll do is we'll reconcile that um, when we get city council approval, and I'm sure the arts department will come back and give you an exact timeline then on what you can see. Um, but we would not start fabrication until after city council approval in June, mm -hmm. and then we'll have to figure out exactly when next year again installed then. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, once you begin a fabrication, how long is that process, roughly? It depends how long we'll get. You know, <laughs> no, I mean that that's all part of this conversation. Is we want to hit an install timeline too. So, and then coordinate that with the installer. So um, there's a couple of moving parts right now that we'll, they'll have to get back to you on the exact timeline for that. It's a lot of little pieces. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the one other lesson learned on the mosaic tile side, just, you know, this will be one, when you think about all the public art and, that the city's done, that you've worked through, this will be the probably the most um, walkable, you know, accessible to a pedestrian, as opposed to accessible to a car, right? The under crossings under the five are mostly a they're a car driven. That you mean you see a little bit on your bike, but they're mostly going by. This is going to be one of the more pedestrian um, driven ones. So it's going to be interesting looking at fabrication and, and how we finalize things based on the fact that. These are all going to be seen by walkers yeah. this far out. So kind of an interesting element for a public art project to be that close to it. Yeah, I'm just going to throw in, it's going to definitely have the sculptural element to mm -hmm. it, too. So yes, it's a mosaic, but it's not going to be flat. So. Well, fantastic. Anybody have any other questions or um, comments? Otherwise, we can uh, uh, entertain a motion to um, um, approve or, or uh, approve the design, recommend to the city council that they approve the, the design. So I, I would make the motion that we move ahead to accept this design. Okay. I second that. Right. Okay. We have a seconded motion. We can move to a vote. Not all the names are showing up, so I'm just going to call your name, and if you're in favor of accepting this, then say aye. Uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner Hebert? I say aye. Uh, Commissioner Fox? Aye. Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Campbell? Aye. Commissioner Kadakia? Aye. Commissioner Lees? Aye. And Commissioner Morakovitz? Aye. The record shows it's unanimous. All right. That's great. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. shop here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so we're going to move on to uh, talking about the annual uh, work plan. Um, and um, I think uh, we're going to discuss and provide updates. I don't know if anyone has any additional questions. I think we, uh, we do have some uh, more ad hoc um, committee slots that we can we can fill um, I uh, I think uh, now that we're here in full force uh, it'll be easier to do that so um, just gonna call this up this was approved by the City Council wasn't it for the year yes it was approved at their April 26 meeting yeah. thank you So, um, so let's. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go down the list, but we um, obviously don't need to talk about the the uh, uh, the items, the ad hocs that already have uh, all of us included. Some of these we have two people. We can we can add one more. Um, so um, just moving down the list here, the. Um, Cultural Tourism Committee, Kathleen is uh, taken care of. Um, and um, for number two, uh, arts advocacy, is there, we have, we have two um, commissioners on there right now. Is there anybody 
else who uh, would like to be a part of that? Um, involves researching funding opportunities. Um, Well, if nobody else would like to do it, I can go ahead and put my name on that one so we can round it out. We can have three people on there, so I'll join join you too. <laughs> um, great, okay. And then, um, let's see, moving down. Uh, we have everybody assisting city staff for the, um, the economic prosperity report. Can you tell me again, can you mention to us what date, what the new date is for when that closes? I know it's been a moving target, so. It was extended, pardon me, by one month. So the audience intercept surveys were being collected through May 31st. So one more month, okay. as many more. Uh, City of Encinitas has met its quota. So we are currently sitting at 462 surveys collected and still some to submit. 400 is how many we were required to do. But the more information we gather is the more data we are able to send on to Americans for the Arts for that anecdotal spending related mm -hmm. to attending different cultural events. So we're not stopping. We're continuing to try and gather as much data as we can before the 31st. So we'll just miss the, the cutoff is right before art night, the next art night, I guess. But it uh, will, yeah. We will not get another art night in that mix, but we have mm -hmm. captured a number of them yeah. in this past year. But we're working yeah. on trying to capture some different kinds of events from other organizations. I've, I've mentioned before that that was probably the biggest challenge we had is that other organizations just felt like it was too much. Even mm -hmm. when we came armed with the volunteers and the resources and really just needed them to let us be there. Um, that was that was a surprising thing for me. It was not expected. So when this happens again, this survey generally happens every five years. It was a little longer between the last one and this one because of COVID. But I will go in armed with that and be able to do a little pre-planning and, and get organizations a little bit better prepared Perhaps, and, yeah. and oriented for how it benefits. Okay. Great, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so number five, we are all assisting with promoting city arts and culture events. Um, and public art policy, um, we uh, can certainly um, have some volunteers for these uh, categories. Um, if anybody is particularly interested in, in um, the El Portal, um, or Olympus. Um. I would like to stay on the El Portal uh, committee. I was on it last year. Mm -hmm. I'd like okay. to stay on it. And you're on the. You're still on the Olympus as well. Yes. Oh, just release. And, yeah. And nothing's happened. Yeah. <laughs> Olympus will require funding. Yeah. Right. Olympus requires funding. So, and if if Kathleen, you for instance, came up with a great funding source for that park, even though you're not part of the ad hoc, you could still bring that forward at one of the public meetings. So even if you're not on an ad hoc, you can still do research. You just can't have that communication with one another. You need to come and bring it to the, the public meeting. So don't be afraid to find well, I, all I, the funding I, I sources you can. I have a funding source, but it's not enough to make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> if, once something starts happening, then I'll be happy to add that. But. Yeah. I'm, and, I'm, I'm, um, Commissioner Abraham was also on that commission last year too. Are, are you interested in staying on it? Which on one is Portal that? Committee. Well, follow it to City Council and be sure. there to support them at City Council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Um, anybody? Uh, Anybody else? I know. I know everybody's uh, getting put on, on a lot of committees, <laughs> so uh, we appreciate uh, all that you've already joined. Um, I believe, Commissioner Lees, that I was also on the Olympus, and I did a little bit of research. So I, oh, I think maybe I'll, I'll continue with that, and maybe we can. Um, we have Commissioner Abraham on the El Portal. 
maybe we can leave it at, at that in, in, until in, anybody else is interested or we have a chance to think on that a little further. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. But uh, um, so that's a little bit of progress. Um, we are all um, volunteering, ideally, for Art Night. And we've got our ad hoc for that. Uh, number eight, we've got our three. Um, number nine, support uh, supporting performing arts, existing cities performing arts programs. Um, and uh, looks as though uh, Commissioner Morakovic, you're the only one on there right now. Um, so I, uh, is anyone else interested? I, I can throw my name in for that one. That's a little bit of my area. Um, so uh, we'll have two for now, um, unless anybody else wants to join in. Uh, OK. OK, great. Thank you, Commissioner Abraham. All right, so we're all full up there. Um, and then uh, Pacific View, obviously, that's a task for all of us. Um, the uh, branding, I, I think that um, uh, that seems to be pretty well in progress. And I know those of you who have been involved, uh, Commissioner Fox and, and uh, Commissioner Campbell, um, have since they've done quite a bit of work on that already. So I haven't seen anything. Oh, not you, one uh, glimpse. Okay. We haven't. <laughs> we've, the, it's the mission and vision that's been started. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. That's, yeah. I think I'm conflating those two. <laughs> Didn't mean to surprise you there. I was like, oh. <laughs> right. Mm. Um, does anybody else? Anybody else have an interest in being a part of that or at, at this moment, or should we move on? Okay. All right. And uh, obviously, the exterior color palette is taken care of. Um, programming model number 13, we've got our three uh, artist residency programs. Um, we have we can take one more, but we don't have to for that. Um, so unless there's anybody who wants to jump in, we'll move on from to the next one. Uh, we've got all of us working on existing programs and as also the next two commission uh, work plan outcomes, we'll be presenting that and our goals for next year. So. I think we're in pretty good shape with the with the work plan, um, but we do have a few slots here and there moving forward. If anybody changes their mind or has an inspiration, and so. you can as as you want to start working on some of these things, you can meet as ad hocs. You don't need me involved. You can reach out mm -hmm. if you need my help with anything. I've just reached out to start setting some appointments. The first one that went out today was for Art Night. Just looking for commonality. I know we all have really busy schedules, so do your best to give me as much availability as you can. We have a lot of people's schedules to find that magic sweet spot where everyone can attend or the most people can attend. Yeah. I have a question. Could you send us like a format showing who we all are and what our contact information is? Because I don't have contact information for the other people on the commission. Phone and email. I, I think I can do that. We've yes, we can send the res we can send the res roster, but just as roster, a just as a word. reminder, no more than three commissioners. Otherwise, you've violated Brown Act. Yes. Okay. Uh, in totality, meaning three, not just three at a time, three total. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I can mm -hmm. do that. Okay, well, if we have uh, no further discussion on the work plan, I think we can move on to the um, Pacific View Arts Center. Um, and um, hopefully everybody's had a chance to look over the report. Um, uh, 
So let me know if you have any questions. Okay. There's not a lot of new pictures because uh, by looking at it, there's not a lot that changed from the last set of pictures I took and this set. They're doing a lot of work on things that are happening kind of behind the walls and in the walls and up here in the, in the soffits. They're working on those kinds of things. So the, the pictures, even though these are new, they look a lot like the ones from last month. Construction is like that. But there, there are things happening, even though it may not look like it. <laughs> is this a time where we can consider I can speak to that quickly. Um, so Colette and I are researching that right now. We do have several sign or ordinances, and Mir uh, Rosemary is correct in saying that certain sizes of signs that are temporary um, can only be up for two weeks. Um, so we're working on that, we're researching that, um, and we should have a solution to that shortly. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I just want to mention, th so there's mention here of the, um, of the meeting that took place, the special meeting, um, which not all of us were able to attend. And, and um, I think, uh, speak on behalf of myself and perhaps Commissioner Fox, that we'd love to, um, during the commissioner's reports at the very end, if, you, if anybody who was there wants to say a few words about uh, you know, the, the, their experiences at that meeting and, and um, uh, you know, their kind of brief takeaways from it, that'd be appreciated. So. If it is anything that you want to discuss, you need to do it during the agendized portion. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to, you can just share information during the right. sharing portion. Yeah, and that's, I think that's what I was saying was, okay. to, you know, we're happy to, to hear comments, uh, you know, uh, yeah, without turning into a discussion necessarily, but okay. yeah. Was that just meeting um, uh, recorded and is it available online? I'm the workshop sure. portion was not recorded. It was not captured. So just the the regular meeting part of it. Okay. So it is within this report, if you wanted to be able to talk about, you know, share things, okay. you just, you can't wait till the end when it's just information sharing. So I just wanted, if that was something you wanted to be able to do, I wanted to make sure you were doing it at the right point in the meeting. So if I could also speak on that, um, we are gonna do a synopsis and, and a recap um, for our next um, session on that because we did we did work on the mission statement but we never got to the vision statement so we are going to continue that work in June um, and as part of that report we'll put together a comprehensive report on what was done um, during that meeting so that the public knows. So, so uh, when you mentioned in in June, is that are you talking about the follow up workshop that's mentioned here? Is that is yes? That the same? And right now, the consensus okay. that we're hearing is that it will be during your regular meeting in June. Oh, okay. Do we know if the consultant will be part of that? We're that... we're working on bringing the consultant back for that evening. Yes. Oh, great. Oh, good. Okay. Good. Good. Great. Thank you. And is the um, mission statement? Is, it's a draft statement. Is, or will we all have input on that, or is it? Will it just be a vision statement? It is a draft statement, and we will, ha like I said, we'll have an overview on how we arrived at that statement because it was a pretty long process to get there. Um, so we'll we'll have an overview on that. Um, but it does need to be voted on to bring it forward to the city council at some point. And just keeping in mind it. It was over two hours to get to that point, so you'll just want to be mindful of how much time we spend on one in order to make sure we have enough time for the other. Understood. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any further questions about the report, the Pacific View report? Any thoughts on that? Um, I guess. Looks, looks like we're all set on that, so thank you, and we'll move on to um, 8D, the communi uh, Commission for the Arts Communication Advocacy. This was a, um, uh, an idea to have a regular presence. Uh, originally, I think, suggested to have a presence at the city council meetings, and that has 
kind of um, transition to being a present, uh, the possibility of being a regular presence at community organization meetings. Um, so how exactly that would, that would sort of unfold, I guess, is something we can discuss um, here. Um, and part of that, obviously, is you know deciding which which groups we would want to speak to, um, and if anybody has any thoughts on on the prospects for this, I'm I'm wondering uh, with how we could pick just one person who would go to a meeting and and represent the whole commission. They'd have to be very careful about what they said, because yeah. if you're reporting on something, you have to be reporting representing the commission, not representing yourself. It's very tricky just even talking to the city council about something else. You have mm. to make sure you're not wearing your arts commission badge and that <laughs> you don't talk anything about the arts commission and what you're doing there. Yeah. Because unless you're authorized by the arts commission to speak, and then and usually in that case, you've pretty much decided, the group has pretty much decided what you'll say. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how we can, other than just somebody say, if you're at, if you happen to be part of the Chamber of Commerce and you're, you, you, know, you go to their regular meetings and they say, well, what happened about arts, you know, the Pacific View last week? You can briefly say what that is, but mm -hmm. I think you have to be pretty careful. So I would not want that job because it's like it <laughs> be a hot seat kind mm -hmm. of job. Yeah, I think part of this, um, you know, Commissioner Lee's as, as the liaison to the Cultural Tourism Committee, as you know, a lot of the representatives from these groups uh, are there from the various chambers of commerce. And so that's a good opportunity, I found, for us to let them know, let this, you know, these representatives from, from a number of different groups, let them know what is going on with the Arts Commission. So I feel as though we've kind of already, we're already kind of accomplishing part of that task in terms of outside groups. Um, it's actually a very good example because a question came up about, oh, the uh, grants, how the grants were selected and which ones got what and all that kind of stuff. And even though I was on the grants committee and helped do the selection, I did not have the answers to their questions. So they called, and uh, Jessie was there, but she didn't have all the specific answers either. So we called Colette and she, came over and she had the information, was able to tell everybody. Yeah. But it, it you know, I wasn't in a position to answer their questions. <laughs> so it's just, um, yeah, I think it's, if we do go, it's always a good idea to, to keep people briefed and say, you know, so like what, what came up with, with um, Commissioner Markowitz's a suggestion about how can we make the information available to people walking through the tunnel. Well, that's already being done. Mm -hmm. So by being at certain meetings, somebody in the group will know that and they can just easily share it. I think that... Um, I think that's within our purview, isn't it? W w could you restate what your question is? Um, if, you're, if you're in a meeting and there's a question about something the Arts Commission is doing, we can briefly answer it, not give details and... Sure, if you know the information, you can, you can answer questions. I think it came about because of, of the request I put in last meeting about having um, more of a presence perhaps on city council meetings. And then um, staff uh, looked into that and spoke with the city clerk and, um, and it's apparent that there is already so many avenues of communication open between city staff as to what the commission is doing as well as the rest of the arts department, um, not the rest, the arts department, um, that that's not something that was um, needed or really desired, by certainly by city council. So um, I believe then, then city clerk wondered if that it would be better to have um, other avenues of communication open to us to be to be able to be advocates for the arts to express what's going on in the city at other meetings that we don't already have a presence at and so that's just about a dispersion of that 
kind of information. So we would probably establish some um, more clear paths forward as far as how that would all work if it's something we're interested in. Um, my feeling is that, yeah, I think, I think that's all great. Uh, perhaps it would be best to kind of get, get the work plan going for a few months and actually start digging into work. And then once we're all working on stuff, um, it will be clear, more clear what we can share. Or in the meantime, maybe brainstorm of different groups, public groups that we could share with. Yeah, I, I feel as though that's kind of the main task under this new, the, the way this is being um, suggested now, I think that would be kind of the main focus is trying to figure out who exactly we'd want to talk to. And uh, it's a very different animal because, uh, you know, we're talking initially it was the regular city council meetings and now it's about, um, you know, I guess occasionally going to speak to a, a variety of different groups. Um, so I think it makes sense to, kind of get into our work plan and figure out how things are, are playing out in in this um, in in our in this period of our of our work and then uh, you know if if there's anybody who has a idea about a group that could really benefit from hearing from us or um, if you get a request from somebody then um, a representative of a group then we could move on from there but um, yeah, I, it just feels as though it's not not going to be kind of a um, as much of a regular effort as it might have been with the city council being being part of this. So it could also potentially be something that the branding ad hoc work on because um, if we wanted to think about the branding as part of communications, yeah, it may it seems it, I can't remember what that wording is, but it's no longer we're not talking about with the work plan anymore, but. Well, it does then, fall within within your work plan number five, which was assist with promotion of city arts and culture events, because that it is, from what I understand, you're wanting to share this information about what's happening. So you can share, you know, published information and be that advocate to those other organizations that you wanted to go mm -hmm. and speak with. Um, we can also I just suggest uh, things that we've done in the past is... Um, if there is a um, really topic of of great interest, we can, as a as a commission, um, write a letter or a statement that we can send to the council. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another way of communication. For sure. Yeah. And um, and I, I believe we're all encouraged to reach out to city council members directly and meet with them and introduce ourselves. And so that's a certainly very open and encouraged avenue to um, foment those relationships. Yeah. Um, I don't believe there's any, we're taking any action on this. Um, it was discussion item, but um, I think we're, yeah, I think we'll, something we'll, we'll, we can circle back to and talk further if, uh, you know, if we come to more of a consensus about um, how this would play out. So, um, so any, unless there are any other thoughts. Oh, go ahead. I was just thinking, when we were thinking about um, communicating accurately and um, <clears throat> one and not making like a mistake or you know of, of speaking about something that shouldn't be spoken about or something yet or but we ha we would have the the published you know the the published um previous meetings so whatever that's we can go by that and may maybe make a summary off of that however we be might we would be like kind of like a month off I guess you could say because of but that would that would be a good resource to use uh to to give up to date, you know, um, information that's been voted on and decided and everything. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the, our minutes from the, the previous meetings or the the. Yeah, um, yeah. Meeting with the the city. Yeah. Speaking at the city council, that would be a definitive way to mm -hmm. to to draw uh, information that things that are already kind of set in stone. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. And the city also has information, so any kind of 
event or things like that, if you were ever needing to have that more definitive information, you could pull things out of staff reports from meetings or reach out to me and, you know, I need clarification on whatever the thing is and I can make sure you've got that right information before you went and spoke to anybody. Uh, okay, well, I think that's a, a good starting point, a good starter of a discussion on that. So thank you, everybody. Um, so unless there are any objections, we can move on to, um, we are on, oh, um, the uh, informational items. We'll throw it to you, Colette. <laughs> All right, it is, we are, like we mentioned earlier about AEP6, we are coming close to the end. Um, got our city's organizational survey in. Well, there are only a handful of other organizational surveys due, and my team is working on getting those done. Thank you to any of you who reached out to those organizations and encouraged them to get them in, because I, I think we've only got three left to get done. The last month for collecting audience surveys, continue to fill those out. If you're at an event, please contribute your information. The Tremonto Music Festival, Music Festival tickets will be going on sale mid-May so that we can put those uh, that information in front of the May 19th Music by the Sea audience. And the Wednesday at noon concerts are continuing to do incredibly well. We're very happy with all of the the musicians and the audience is coming to enjoy. Great. Just so I, I know, where where's the best place for people to purchase those tickets if we want to sort of spread the word? Is there a link on the They're, they're not up just yet, but, but, but right, the link it, to them and all mm -hmm. concert information we've consolidated within the city's webpage. Mm -hmm. So the short link to get there is encinitasca.gov forward slash concerts. Okay. And you, did you say May 15th? What was the date for the Mid May. On? The, oh, the, mid -May. the okay. Music by the Sea concert is on May 19th. So mm -hmm. it's all going to be ready ahead of that. Got it. Okay. That's great. That's exciting. Okay. Um, is there anything further we need to know about this uh, art night? Not, I don't have any other informational items okay. in great. the division report. Okay. Um, yeah, as always, volunteers, I'm sure, will be appreciated at Art Night. It's coming up quickly. So. Very much so. Uh, okay. Um, so number 10, commission member initiated agenda items. I don't believe we have any of those. No? Okay. Um, future agenda items. Um, Maybe I can. Oh, sorry. Well, I was... Um, Vicky. Noticing a lot of um, light pollution um, coming up, and I was wondering if we could, um, if it's within our ability to discuss um, future lighting um, with new, new construction, new projects, with some of the affordable housing projects, um, and with some of the larger projects, that we could request the city um, be very aware of lighting and its effect on our environments and on our people and our health. Um, and I don't know if this is something that we um, would be able to impact because I, I mean, as a lighting designer in college, I, I know it's a very artistic lighting um, affects everything and how you see it. Um, and what I'm concerned about is the, um, developments having lights that do not turn off um, and and because of the number of installations that we have um, I'd like to um, ask the city to be aware of that and maybe even to put some sort of a lighting um, in into each of these um, projects 
that something that we can even ask for? So I could speak on that. That's not under the purview of the Arts Commission. Um, that would be more of an environmental commission or a planning commission. So I would recommend if you're interested in speaking on that to come to one of their meetings and then um, speak on that or bring it to the city council and then they would assign it. Yeah, thank you for that. I understand what you're saying about the, the aesthetic side of lighting, but uh, yeah, it does sound like something that might be a little bit outside our our, our realm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, anybody else had have a thought on an agenda item, future agenda item? You might want to add. Or? No. Okay. Okay, great. So we are at number 12, the uh, commissioner's reports. Um, so anybody who has, uh, you know, been to a meeting or, or ha just has, has something they want to report to us and Commissioner Lise. <laughs> I, I did attend the Cultural Tourism Committee and everyone says hello to you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> and um, the, the main subject that, that we discussed was the, the outcome of the community grants because there were a number of people there who had applied for the community grants. And so everybody wanted to know all about it. Mm -hmm. And Colette got to come interrupt her morning to be with us and give, straighten everybody out. <laughs> and um, I attended the State of the City uh, dinner, mm -hmm. which was just as a regular citizen, not as a commissioner <laughs> of the arts. And um, it was different this year because instead of just the mayor speaking from what his perspective of the state of the city was, he had each of the council people speak about what was going on in their district. And he had each of the people that were running the Main Street Association, so we have three, Cardiff, Downtown, and Lucadia, they each spoke. And by the way, our representative did a terrific job. <laughs> of, from re speaking about Lucadia. <laughs> and uh, the, the head of the Chamber of Commerce spoke. So it was, uh, it was really very different and I think enlightening to a lot of people because they raised issues that were not necessarily something that I think the mayor would have seen as an overall issue mm -hmm. to talk about, but about each one of their communities. Because mm -hmm. of course, the business people and the people who were there all live in those communities or are doing business there. So. I thought, it was, I thought it was a really terrific way to do it. And um, the Lucadia Town Council, this is the other hat I wear, uh, we, attend, we had Arbor Day at Lucadia Oaks Park, mm -hmm. and I was able to speak to the fellow whose name I can't remember. Two fellows, the fellow who is in charge of all of the parks and the fellow who is in charge of Lucadia Oaks Park. And I was able to show them the platform that is going to hold a piece of public art and they both said, oh, I wondered what that was. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did kind of know there was a public arts program. So um, they, t they told me they would be in touch with you, Colette. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, we're working on it, and uh, you know, there really isn't anything for them to do, and it's taken a while to get the, all the platforms installed and everything. But I thought it was a good opportunity to remind them that we are working on it, yeah. and that is something that's coming up. It was a, yeah. a great day. They planted a bunch of trees, and the original approval for that park was that it would be all native plantings, and that kind of got, got lost over the years, but this year, the 20 trees they planted were all native-ish, kind of regional, mm -hmm. so they're like California or Arizona, and they'll grow well there, and they will attract the birds and bees and animals, so mm -hmm. it was very mm -hmm. nice. And in future, all future plantings going in that park, and their plan for all of the parks is to go more native plants instead of showy plants. Thank you. I'm glad you were able to attend that event, and uh, I appreciate that report. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, for those those of you who were at the um, uh, the workshop, if there's anything you wanted to add that we haven't heard already, um, uh, you know, feel free. Otherwise, it, it, it's uh, it's fine. But. Uh, um, I just want to share, it was a fascinating process for me. Um, I think we started off being um, really chaotic, I, I guess, <laughs> because there was so much input from just just the community. And I, I definitely was amazed at the input and the personal input people had 
from the community. I've never seen anything like this, so I was just very impressed. And then the, the, the consultant, who I'm glad is coming back, just took all that information and sort of, uh, um, there was a process of osmosis almost hmm. um, that uh, then came to us and there was a lot of back and forth and it was a very exciting process. Hmm. Although I do feel, I've I know two hours seems like a lot, but I think we got a lot done <laughs> for the two hours. Um, but uh, I, I just hope we we reach the good um, sort of value statement in the time we were given. Yeah. Um, so I know there were, uh, you know, if the community was so st strongly behind a certain way of positioning the value statement. So. Uh, it was hard to keep everybody happy. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> but it was wonderful. I, I enjoyed it. So. That's great. Well, thank you for being a part of that, and thanks for that that report. Um, I, I'll just add quickly, uh, Commissioner Fox and I were in, invited on behalf of the full commission for uh, to the city council meeting on April 19th, and I... I had wanted to make sure to get this correct. Uh, April was Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month, so they, uh, the City Council actually is, issued a proclama proclamation commemorating uh, April as that month, and also, uh, you know, extending a thank you to the to the work we do here. And while we were in attendance, I think it was meant for for all of us to, you know, uh, take um, take some. Uh, just uh, to revel in that appreciation, I guess. <laughs> so, um, uh, but that's all I have. Uh, I'm sharing your photograph. I took pictures. What? Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Kathleen was there to take photos. <laughs> and I'm passing. The proclamation is being passed now. I think. Oh, great. Okay. If I send this to you, Colette, then you can send it to everybody. So they see the <laughs> photograph of them receiving the... the I can, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, any other reports or... Yeah, I think I've seen that. Thank you. Um, and nobody else? Uh, okay. Uh, it looks as though we have finished that discussion, and I think we have finished our last agenda item... So, uh, unless there are any objections, uh, we will adjourn the meeting at, uh, we're going to say, 629. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Need some practice still. <laughs> <laughs>